Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. It's great to have you with us. And uh, if you're just joining us, we are broadcasting from the Concierge Landscape Studios. We're brought to you this hour by Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. Before we get into our next story, we want to let our listeners know we've got a free resource for you. Uh, we have a bi-monthly newsletter, one that's co- a new one that'll be coming out now uh, this next month mm-hmm. in July. You don't want to miss it. A lot of the topics we cover here on on the show we cover in full, further detail, and uh, over twenty three thousand subscribers now who say it is a must read. Mm-hmm. All you need to do to get your very own copy is give us a call during the week at 952-922-2500. Ask for Lori, and she'll make sure that you start receiving your copy. We also have an, uh, the ability for you to let us know what you think and how you're feeling, not only about what we talk about, but generally speaking about your housing. If yep. you're a landlord, if you're a renter, if you're a member of a homeowners association and you have a hot topic, we want to hear about it. Call our hotline at 952-224-2668 and let us know what's on your mind. We'll address it on the air. That's right. We've had some some great comments uh, from our listeners. Uh, let's go with our next story. This is coming uh, out of the state of New Jersey, and uh, it is a, a warning to homeowner associations, don't be too hasty in towing or in necessarily just being quick enforcement, to enforcement generally. of yeah. your rules and regulations in an HOA, and we'll tell you why. Uh, there was a recent decision by the Appellate Division of New Jersey Superior Court uh, in a case called Bresnowitz versus the SB Road Condominium Association uh, that uh, decided a few days ago that the court affirmed the previous judgment against the Condominium Association for reimbursement of the costs incurred by a unit owner in retrieving her car after the association had towed it for parking in a prohibited space. And uh, this is... Uh, what took place in the uh, notes of uh, the case they were into uh, specifics here. They said um, it was around uh, 4 p.m. on April 8th that the, uh, that the, uh, per- the homeowner had uh, parked her car in her space. No, not exactly, was Gene. It? Nope, nope, nope. At 4 p.m. on April 8th, the board ah. or management distributed a notice to everyone in the association right. saying, saying you cannot park you're right. <laughs> in this space. And it was shortly after that that she pulled that she had uh, pulled in and did not notice did not notice uh, the notice or maybe she pulled in I had She might have even been already really been parked there. We don't okay. know for sure. So anyway, it, it was the end of the day on April 8th yeah. that there's a notice down in the parking area, hey, don't park here. Uh, a because, notice delivered door to door. Okay. And so the plaintiff uh, left, it said, the very next day on a business trip. While she was away, the association's uh, manager also continued to try and uh, uh, contact her by a telephone call then, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And left a message on her answering machine uh, warning her that if she didn't remove her car, it would be towed. Mm -hmm. Uh, The association finally had her car towed on the 11th a couple days afterwards. What's also significant is the reason they were asking her and others not to park in this certain area was because they needed to bring in washing machines right into the they building. They had a delivery coming, yeah, of a large with a large but, truck. W- but when did that happen? That happened that very evening. That happened later in the evening on April 8th. So, so here... Uh, I mean, th- this is bad all the way around. So here, <laughs> so here you have uh, the delivery is already taken place. So the machines are already in. Now it seems like people are just uh, upset because, well, darn it, you didn't respond to us. You know, yeah. we we sent out a notice. Yeah, you didn't move your car. We called. We called you the very next day, but the machines are already in. 
Right. The the yeah. And 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 so what they ended up doing saying, well, forget you. If you're not going to respond to us, we're going to tow your yeah. car and they they felt yeah. Uh, righteous and being able to do it, so yeah. they pulled the car. The lesson, or or the the message that the superior court, the appellate division of the superior superior court delivered, was that boards and managers need to enforce rules in a reasonable manner with sufficient notice, adequate notice of a violation, and if possible, an opportunity to cure the issue to avoid any sanctions. So, and especially in a case like this where what they do is irretrievable. Mm -hmm. It's not like they put a $50 fine on her account that she can later dispute and they can later remove. They towed her car. It was gone. Mm -hmm. And she ended up owing $445 for the tow. So, so I can understand why she's mad. I, when I take a look at this, I I see two things at at fault here. One is, uh, in a patient, in a impatient board, uh, Number one, and just wanting to uh, let's just uh, enforce those rules, darn it, right now. And and we've seen that from time to time, where someone says, um, "You know, if I had, uh, if I was given a fine several years ago, darn it, everybody else is going to be looked out. <laughs> We're going to look for them, hunt them down, and find yeah. every single." A violation and make sure they get fined too. There, there's that kind of uh, attitude. The other uh, is from an inexperienced management company. <laughs> that was my first reaction. I hope it's not because I have a guilty conscience or anything, yeah. but my first reaction was, this smells a little bit like a property manager who did not issue this notice in a timely manner and was scrambling to get the notice out before the delivery? Well, it, you're, you're right. It could be the case. Yeah. We don't know that, but it yeah. could be the case that the manager knew about this a week or two ahead of time. Had and been is, instructed and it, to do send a notice. Yeah. But yeah. there's nothing that talks about that uh, no, a- anywhere. No, there isn't. There isn't. But uh, I guess my point is mistakes happen. Yeah. And all of us being human beings, sometimes we drop the ball. But one of the things that I would I, I would say point out to for a management company or a property manager would be to be quick to go back to the board and talk there about it. Unrealistic expectation. Yeah. If if it yeah. was the expectation of the board to say we decided on um, April seventh that we're going to have these machines come in on the eighth in the evening. And we want you sometime tomorrow to put a notice out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just too soon. The manager should that's have said. That's not allowing adequate time. The, the, for notice. the, man, the manager should have said, hey, board, let's rethink this. Yeah. Let's reschedule this. Yeah. Uh, washing machines, it's not like it's an emergency yeah. uh, life or death situation. Yeah. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, and plan this where everybody knows what's going on. There's a benefit to that. Number one, people get to see the association moving forward and doing things with the money yep. that is uh, retrieved uh, with their monthly assessment. So to me, that's a good thing. Sure. You're saying, hey, look, we are getting those new washing machines sure. and we are bringing them in on this date. And it, it shows that the management company is organizing and that, but- more importantly, you're also giving people a proper notice. Well, yes, you're giving everyone the chance, the opportunity to comply <laughs> with what's going on. Um, the other thing that I'm always thinking of, and if you talk to the people I work with in our rental division, they'll tell you I say this several times a week. When they're asking me a question about policy or about why I do things or recommend doing things a certain way, I I almost always say, all right, first, I imagine myself explaining this to the judge when I'm standing in front of him in court with some irate resident. Um, And that's absolutely true. What would a judge consider reasonable? A judge would not consider it reasonable that I hand delivered a notice at four o'clock and then two hours later had washing machines delivered and and put this person in a violation status because she hadn't moved her car. Yeah. I mean, I don't think a reasonable person would agree with that process. So so for me that's helpful to say, 
in my mind, okay, Mr. Judge, here's what we did and here's why we did it. Yes. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly here. I, I'd like us, uh, we, we need to take a, a break right now. When we come back, we've got one last segment, so don't go away. We want to talk a little bit more about uh, giving some advice to our uh, board members on uh, HOAs on uh, what is good follow-through, what is good mm-hmm. procedure to have in the rules and regulations and their enforcement. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. 